Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to The Daily Profile. I'm Corbs. This is an after-trading stream. We do it every single day-ish, Monday through Thursday, where we jump into the charts. We take a look at what exactly had happened in the markets. Hope you guys are having a good day. We got a, uh, how can I say this, humdinger of a session to talk about. Honestly, there's just too much. There's too much. Normally, we have a lot to talk about in a little bit of time. Today, there is too much to talk about. I don't even know where to start. So we're going to start at the beginning. Glad you guys are here with me. If you guys are in the room and joining me live, a big welcome to you. Jump into the chat, say what's up. I'm going to do a roll call of sorts. I want to see who is in the building with me, and then we're going to jump right into things. If for any reason this is your first time on the stream or watching the replay, by all means, a big welcome to you. I hope you plan on sticking around. It's a good spot to come after the market, decompress a little bit. We talk about the good, we talk about the bad. I'm going to give you some thoughts for your thoughts, and then we're going to wrap up. Now, today is Thursday. This means that this will be our last stream of the week as far as the live trading is concerned, as well as the Daily Profile show is concerned. So today is the day that you've been saving the tears and goodbyes for. We need to get it all out of our system because uh, we will not have another chance. And I won't see you guys again until Monday. I miss you guys already. Let me just go ahead, do a quick roll call of sorts, see who's in the building, and then we're going to jump right into things. Let's see here. Orlando, front and center. What's up, Warren? Nice to see you. James Coates, hello, hello, inner trading. Salazar, thank you for the confirmation. Hey, Mass Trader. Hey, Randy. Nice to see all of you out and about. To the rest of you in the room, feel free to jump into the box and say hello. I'll comment on everybody. Nobody's going to go unheard. To the 11 of you who've hit the like button before we've even gotten started, Mwah! you guys know I love you all equally. To the rest of you in the room who did not, I got my eyes on you. What up with that? Let's all hit the like button as we get started. Z-Boy, what's up? Nice to see you. Hello to you as well. And like I said, feel free to keep jumping in the chat box because we're going to be referencing it throughout. We'll be right back. Let's go ahead and jump into some charts, though, and take a look at what exactly had happened in the markets. Uh, very interesting day. If you guys were in the room trading with us live today, today was a bit of a dog fight. There was some tempers being flared. There was some trades failing. There was trades working. It was a very interesting session. I hope everybody stayed safe. Let's talk about it a little bit. We're going to drill into a little bit of detail. To date, this is my biggest day on the funded account uh, challenge that we're doing. We're going to drill into what exactly that looked like. And let's go ahead and pick it up just right from the beginning. The S&P opened up in a huge gap to the upside. This is back-to-back -back gap days. Uh, this big red area reference on my chart, this is the gap that was left behind from yesterday. We actually have a bit of a gap inside of a gap, if you will, a little bit of an inception gap of sorts. There's that dark red area is actually an additional gap area that's drawn into my charts. That comes from the overnight profile where there was a gap created on that news event. And then during the regular trading hours, there was an additional gap left behind. So we got gaps for days. Opening up today, though, we put in another gap to the upside. Uh, what we did opened up, kind of retraced this gap a little bit, very similar to what we did in the previous session, and then started taking off early signs that this might be kind of a grind higher, just pushing up and up and up. Uh, we ended up hitting some failure, getting back into the overnight range, going coast to coast, extending out the range to the downside quite a bit. We had a very deep pullback that took us right to the daily VWAP. This took us right back to the open. This took us right back to the mid of day. We'll look at this in a little bit more detail. This created uh, an incredible opportunity if you were there and, and were ready for it. And then we extended out that range to, to finish out and to uh, close the gap below us. And then here towards the end of the day, we're just, things are getting a little bit erratic, uh, potentially going to finish slightly outside the range. Doesn't really change anything in my opinion though. A couple of things that happened today specifically, if you guys were in the live trading room with me, was trying to get those shorts off into this 47 right in here, ended up getting uh, shook and took out of a pretty increased size position that was incredibly frustrating for me. This is where the first string of profanity started, I think. Ended up putting the trade back on because of how it set up, rode it down all the way through. Uh, to new low of day on reduced size, which was very unfortunate. And then where we had to end the call, we were back in short, looking for this to dip down, go further, uh, potentially even close the gap. Now, that trade that we left off on failed. It didn't fail. We secured profit all the way, the last contract. Uh, maybe we only had one contract on. I forget exactly how that trade played out. Either way, um, we were up about $600 on the morning, looking for this to continue lower. Ended up coming all the way back around, had to get out of this trade. And then this mid opportunity is really where the bulk of everything happened for me today. Ending out this session a little over $5,000 up. Uh, again, most of this opportunity came from that mid play. 
I want to drill in and take a look at this. A couple very nice dynamic things happened today. One is this is the first day in a little while here where the way that I'm managing risk is I'll be more aggressive as I have a little bit of room to be aggressive with. This is one of the first days where I was able to build that and then go into a, a very profitable trade with some better size. Um, very nice dynamic that happened today. So if we drill in, this is that VWAP pullback that we were looking at, just granular in detail. This green line going across is showing the open. And then at the time that this was created, the mid has shifted since because of the range being extended pretty dramatically to the downside. Um, but if we were to drill this in, and if I was just to put a level on here so that we could identify where that mid is taking place, drawing this from the highs and from the lows, this 50% mark is the mid. So we had this nice stacking up of it was the mid of the day, it was the VWAP, it was the open, several things lining up right there. There might have even been something else. It was just uh, an important level. Ended up pushing right into that, coming down, uh, testing what would be the initial balance low yet again, kind of chopping around this a little bit more. This was a very nasty choppy level. And then we ended up working our way down, extending out the range slightly, kind of chopping around some more, and then going for that additional push, which took us into filling the gap, which was around the 13 level. It took us all the way down to the overnight low, which we have not done a very good job of, of you know, reaching, mo reaching much outside of that overnight. Overall, though, putting about 60 points worth of range, a lot of action, a lot happened today. Um, there was a few very interesting things that shaped up today. Um, honestly, we said it earlier, a little too much to talk about. Like, there were so many things that happened today. We took our, our live trading call all the way up until 12. The only reason we stopped at 12 is I had an additional call that I had to be on. So there was no time to, like, decompress and just talk about anything that happened. And honestly, so much other stuff has happened since then. It's... I'm, I'm a little lost at where I'm at even in the world right now. And so to try and go back and to put together which trades happened where, this is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, this is why we have to be able to have some kind of a record to reflect back on, as well as step back, give ourselves a time to break, and then come back before we can accurately decompress. Um, because this was a, an extremely active day. Coming into this, sat on this for most of the morning. Uh, as this was shaping up, as we're getting past... 10 o'clock, I believe, there was still no trades involved, if you guys were in the room with me. And then we started getting active as there was uh, something to do. Specifically, getting active, our first trade of the day was this long, everything was shaping up for this long kind of grind higher, ended up getting involved with the 50 and taking this push up, which was quite nice. As this failed back into this overnight level, this was kind of the first big thing for me. One of the big things was we just had this massive gap zone below us that to me was likely to get filled in more at least down to around the 27 that we talked about. That was half gap fill. That was the mid of the overnight session. A couple metrics there that are very likely to get tagged during regular trading hours. So statistically, it was likely that we were going to get down at least to the 27 today. We didn't do very well. Pushing all of this up, though, everything was shaping up to the upside, so there was no reason to be looking short. This was the first sign to me when we broke this down and, st and held below the overnight low or the overnight high. Um, this is a very repeatable type of pattern that I'll get involved with. You guys saw I was very interested in this area. I took a few trades around this area because the comment to me was, we had the high and we had the low of day. However we treat this area right here, this is where we're going to likely push the high of the day or the low of the day. So this is not something to miss. Um, so try to get involved with it on the long side and the short side just because of how this chopped around it showed signs that this was breaking down, showed signs that this was holding, and then eventually we broke it down. So it was very unfortunate the amount of chop that we had and how far we went away from this level. Um, it caused me to get chopped out of this trade twice before the trade worked. One of those times getting chopped out tripled the size that I had when the trade worked. Uh, again, very unfortunate, but still ended up putting up nicely and being a big hold uh, to take this into new low of day. And right at this overnight high, this is where that big move initiated. It wasn't a random place. This was a very important you know, level to me because uh, it was contextually fit in very nicely. Um, a couple other things that happened, pushing back into this, kind of defending this, this initial balance low. We had some additional trades getting involved with that. This was right in here. This 27 level was fairly important to me for like a few reasons uh, that we talked about on the call. As this chopped around like this, 
And then once we had this big push where you can even see the volume was spiking, this was a, a big push higher coming off of these lows. Um, this is where that trade ended. We were holding shorts about the 31, and we were looking for this to go all the way down and to close the gap, which would have put us around 13. This is where we had to end the call because I was jumping on a different one. This is what kicked me out of the call. Uh, this is what kicked me out of that, that trade. Um, and if you, for any reason you didn't see this happen, I wasn't on the long that I was holding shorts. This kicked me out of a trade here. But this push that happened, we had several other pushes that took me right back to just about break even on that trade. The trade was at 31. All of this action is here is like in the 30s. But this push that happened that kicked me out, this was very different than these moves that happened in here. Um, and, and this would be something even to go back and look at and to see if you can spot the differences between what this looked like and what these rotations into the same area looked like. Because even before this blasted through, I took the remainder of that trade off at 31, didn't get back involved, wasn't sure what we were doing, and then this you know, other additional big push happened up right in there. Uh, this was a nice thing not to have to you know, get blown out on or to, to lose anything out on. Um, a lot of other things happened on the day as far as just the action is concerned. The main thing, though, was just taking this short uh, I didn't even enter in at this open or at this mid. I let this break back down and then got in again once we got outside the initial balance um, and then took it down. Didn't take it down to the close. The gap close took us into about this 14 area right in here. As we pushed into, uh, even back here, this 18 area, this is where I ended the trade. Ending it because I was in at the 30, down here in the 18, was looking for four additional points. We were having some issues here. This pullback got out before the pullback happened. This pullback could have just as easily took us back to the 27, back to my original entry, and ended up not taking us back that far, and then going back for an additional massive move to the downside, okay? All of this to the downside, no involvement with, no trades taken, um, it wasn't, you know, didn't take any more out of that. Very similar idea to what we saw yesterday. There was some things happened yesterday, things happening today, both of these very large days up for me. Both of these days um, being not capturing the scope of the actual move, capturing pieces of the move, um, and also being extremely patient and laying off a lot of this action, and in very unique times, being aggressive about hitting in on it. And this would be a nice thing to take away from when we're doing these live streams. It'd be a nice thing to do when we're in the live trading room to just pick up on those subtle differences. And when a trade is shaping up and I'm putting one contract on because of where that entry is and what the idea is and what the potential targets are, and when I'm increasing size dramatically because this is not a trade to miss. And when we have those conversations of this is a spot we cannot miss because of what the potential is, this is a spot where I don't even know what's going on. I don't know where the potential is. I'm just chilling, just sitting on it. Um, another good thing to take away from today, if you guys were in the room, was the level of, I would say, aggression, <laughs> if, you, if any of you remember. Um, very frustrating day. Got kicked out of a lot of things. The market was being... You know, we kind of walk through it in this nice little just this is what happened. But when we don't have any information, we're up against the hard right edge. The way that this was moving today was absolutely brutal. It was a freaking dogfight. Made us really work for every single move that we were sitting through. Every single move was extremely painful. Um, it, was, it was very difficult to understand what this was doing. And it, it was not an easy trading environment for me at all. Um, and I imagine, there, you know, there was a lot of issues that a lot of people had with this with this trading. But something you'll notice from today as well, I, I got very angry. I was screaming a lot of profanities. And I stayed locked in. And this is something to know about yourself because there's times where you guys hear me say it a lot, where I got to shut down the stream. I got to shut down the stream because I got to walk away. Like I know that I'm frustrated, but I also know like I'm, I'm out of the game. We're going to feel emotions, and there's nothing wrong with feeling emotions. The goal of trading, I don't think, should be some kind of stoic, there's no issues that you have. You don't face any kind of frustrations. Because if you're doing that, more than likely, you're not trading correctly. Like, you're either not using nearly enough size, you're not pushing things nearly hard enough, like, you're not, you're not actively in this game. If you are, you are going to feel certain things. Um, and if you feel those things, it's one thing. And to know about yourself, I can feel this thing, but to know when you're also out of the game, where your head's not in the space, you're not in the moment anymore, you're now completely caught up with what just happened a moment ago, or completely freaking out about something that is, is likely to happen, um, 
And as soon as that starts happening and you know you're no longer focused in the moment, this is the time to completely walk away. And you guys see that dynamic with me. A lot of times I get extremely frustrated and I shut down the stream because I say, I have to walk away. My mind is out of this. I can't focus. I got to step away. So I step away. Today, cursing, screaming, probably threw my glasses at some point, but never left the screen. Stay dialed in. I had a very big profitable day. And through that, I knew I was very frustrated, but I also knew I was in it. I also knew I wasn't focusing on the wrong things. I knew I wasn't freaking out about getting kicked out. I was locked back in, realizing this had more to go, looking for the new entry. Um, Very different dynamics there on a very subtle change. And if you get mad, if you get frustrated, but you know you're dialed in, it's all good. If you get mad, you get frustrated, and you start sizing up, and you start freaking out, and you start over-trading, you know, these are very very different worlds and we need to understand we can get mad we can get frustrated but we have a job to do and if we're, we're not in a position to do that job then it's time to walk away as long as we can keep doing that job it's all good you know break a keyboard do whatever you need to do but make sure you stay in the game okay those are some thoughts for your thoughts we're just i wish today we could kind of just unpack a while longer because a lot of stuff happened today inside of this action, but that'll be good for now. Let me jump in the chat, see what's up with you guys. Let's hang out for a little bit, and then we will uh, just wrap things up for here. We'll wrap things up for here. We'll wrap things up for the week. Ugh, the taste in my mouth when I say that we're going to wrap up for the week and be done. It just, I don't like it. I don't like it, but we must. Let me see here. Uh, let's jump into Mass Trader. Mass Trader, while the day's profile developed, do you trade the open based on the prior day profile? Uh, or different metrics, question mark. While the day's profile develops, do you trade the open based on the prior day's profile or different metrics? Thanks. Really, really nice question. So there's a point in the day where the developing profile is of little to no use. And you don't want to, early in the morning, see a point of control shift, see higher low volume areas, and be putting an unnecessary amount of importance on that because the information can change extremely quickly. There's, There's things in the profile that can be shaping up early, And it's early. There's not much there, so it doesn't take anything to just completely change that information around, yeah? So while that's happening and the open is going on, am I looking at the previous day's profile to take into account, you know, context or or base trade ideas on? Um, Definitely, yes. Not exclusively, but definitely. Yeah, definitely understanding. And the way that I kind of treat it, the, the open is like its own beast. Like when the open is happening, there's certain pieces of information like I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to see... And if there's ever times where I'm just like sitting on my hands for the first several minutes, I'm not just sitting on my hands waiting for 15 minutes to go by. I'm, there's no time limit for me. Sometimes I'll put a trade on in the first three minutes of the day. Sometimes I'll put a trade on in the, like yesterday, I didn't put a trade on for the first, you know, once the regular trading hours start, I didn't put one on for the entire morning. And it has nothing to do with time, but it has something to do with there's certain things that I'm looking for. If you looked at yesterday, we moved down once, we moved up once, and then the whole rest of the morning, we just stayed inside that first range. I didn't have any information there. I didn't know what to do with it, yeah? Um, so while that's developing, I'm definitely looking at the previous day profile as part of a, a like a, you know, sometimes it's the most important piece of information for my day. Sometimes it's not that important. It really depends on what that context is. And whenever we're looking at pieces of information, it's all going to be relative. Sometimes the open price is the most important level of the day. Today, if you will, it was, because we pulled back to that open. The trade of the day was trading off that open. Other times, the open is always going to be important, but it's not the main thing for that day. And we never know how the day is going to shape up, but there will come times where a very valuable piece of information just never even comes into play. And then there will come times where a valuable piece of information is the most important thing. As a simple example, maybe yesterday was a double distribution profile. We open up in one edge of that distribution and we fail and start heading to the the other distribution from the previous day. That cues me in. I'm targeting that previous day's point of control or at least the HVN for that distribution. Um, You know, these are very valid trade ideas to me that come strictly off of that information. In other days, like today, the previous day's profile was nothing I took into account at all. It mattered nothing to me. A lot of words for that answer. I hope that helps. Uh, MDA. Is your bias now short as far as an uh, intermediate term goes? No, not at all. Um, I, if anything, I'm still long intermediate. Um, I, I'm not long or short anything, but if I was looking at this just with the information we have right now, I would still be looking, we're still kind of in price discovery mode to me, even with this pullback that we experienced today. 
But really important to understand, I don't really care about it. Tomorrow we might come in and, and that's completely different. My, what happens intermediate and these type of things is, is not much of a concern. Good example, today coming in, every time frame I look at was pointing up, price discovery mode, heading higher. And most of the trades, all of the profits basically, came from taking shorts today. So I'm not like throwing myself in the face and like who cares about this other information, but I have a job to do today and what's happening on a monthly time frame is important. But what's more important is what's happening right now in this moment because I'm not gonna be in this trade the end of the month, I'm going to be in this trade for the end of the, you know, morning. I hope that answers your question. Any thoughts about the bearish candle at 315? A bit hesitant to take it because price had been hanging around the point of control so long. Any thoughts? Let me take a look at it. Let me see the question again. Any thoughts about the bearish candle at 315? I guess it might help me to understand what time frame you're looking at when you say that, if you're looking at a 15 minute candle. Yeah, I don't, uh, I'm guessing it wasn't a 15 minute candle. If you could, James, help me out with what exactly you were looking at there and then I can probably answer a little bit. Odd American, good to see you, what's up? Let's see here, Deca, how much did you profit today? Up just over five grand on the funded account. Ocean Blue, your profit totals were not updating on, uh, on the screen today, both were sitting at zero. Ocean Blue, uh, yeah, nice observation. It's still set at zero. That's why, that's the only reason why I have this depth of market on the actual screens. If you guys, I can actually show, this is what you guys see when you are joining me live on YouTube. And uh, typically my face is in that black spot. I put this depth of market here so that we can see when trades are happening. Um, Y'all get a look at the trades show up right here and the P&L is visible right in here, albeit much smaller. For some reason, the trades do not show up on the charts and the trades are not showing up on that box right there. It's something I'm actively working on. It's just been the last, I'll say, I think two days that I've been using Sierra instead of NinjaTrader. And these last two days, I had this all hooked up a certain way and it's just not working out. I said it several times, but if anybody would understand why that's happening, the same exact setup, if I switch to simulator, it shows up on the charts. When I'm switching to the, the Apex account, it doesn't show up on the charts. So everything being the same. But if you guys understand, uh, you know, get to that. Let's see here. Or you could hit me up, that would be great. Let's see here. James, sorry, I was talking about the bearish candle at 115. Um, Ocean Blue though, if you were in the room watching, you should have seen all any trades that were taken showed up on the depth of market, all of that was visible. James, sorry, I was talking about 115. Oh, very interesting, okay. Yeah, that changes things a little bit, doesn't it? Bearish candle at 115. I'm guessing, is that? I'm still not sure, I guess, what time frame you're looking at here. I don't know if I'm seeing any bearish candles at 115, really. Maybe a little closer to 130. Yeah, let me know what. Uh, let me know. Let me know what exactly. Let me show you what time frame you're looking at, and I can see what you're talking about exactly. I'm not seeing like a big bearish move at 115. Um, Tom, my biggest day yet. How much did you profit, sir? Just over five thousand dollars. Five thousand thirty-seven, fifty without fees and commissions. Good job, Tom, having your big days ever. It's here. Uh, so, 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 James, also, there has to be more pressure trading and streaming your trades. Yeah, James, I'm, I'm slightly getting over that. Like, I'm starting to feel much more comfortable on the streams. It's the worst thing in the world to start, though. It's so freaking chaotic when the market's going, especially if something's going against you, and then you've got these, like, I don't know, even if I'm not looking at them, I see, like, comments going and just knowing what's happening. It's the worst thing in the world. But I'm getting over it, and there will come a time when it doesn't even phase me, which I'm trying to get to. So that's a, big, that's a big reason for streaming these the way that we're streaming them right now. You skipped my question, Elid. No, say it's not so. Let me jump back. When hitting back VWAP after the down rally, I tried to get it back to the high of day. Postmortem, it seems silly. Um, but how can I tell once it happened? I mean, it could be going up. Let me see this again. When hitting back to VWAP after the down rally, I tried to get it back to the high of day. Okay. 
let's go ahead and pull up a chart here and take a look at that because this is a nice question and I want to make sure that you are saying the same thing that I'm saying here. So here we're talking about the rally that took us back up. This was that test of VWAP. If, if we're talking about the same thing, I'll keep my eye on the chat so you can let me know if this isn't right, Elid, but I'm assuming this is what you're talking about. We tested this VWAP and then you were looking for this to go to the high of day. There was also a time earlier in the day where we kind of tested VWAP, so let me reread your question immediately. And then uh, when hitting back to VWAP after that down rally. Yeah, yeah, okay. So this is what we're talking about then. It's got to be. Um, so looking at this on the charts as it is, this pullback to VWAP right in here, there would be a couple things that, that you've missed on this that I would really look into. One is what... What is the difference between testing a level and holding a level? Like, for instance, when we hit this VWAP, we're holding below VWAP. If we've been in downward selling and we've pulled back and we're holding below VWAP, that's a very bad sign for longs. If we were to break above that and hold above VWAP, that becomes very different. And so to enter a trade as we're holding above VWAP, that makes a lot of sense. And so... This is something I know a lot of people don't think about, is when you have a key level that's very valid, something that I have to understand is, are we holding this level or not? And there needs to be a way that you answer that question because it's never going to just hold it perfectly. It's going to do maybe what we're seeing here where it several different times, it kind of, excuse me, <laughs> several different times, it kind of peaks above VWAP. And so the answer is, on any of these pushes through VWAP, was that now holding above VWAP? If you answer yes, and the way you look at this, you think that that was holding above VWAP, you need to rethink what a holding level is because that, that, that's not at all what happened. And you're going to have a lot of trading frustrations around it. So there's a very specific way, based on the day and the product we're trading, that I've refined down and I understand, did this hold or did it not? And so if I'm looking to take a trade and I think this is going back up, and I, I want to enter at VWAP, first thing that needs to happen is I need to make sure we're holding above VWAP. Because if we're holding below VWAP, it's a no-go. And I'll do that with everything. If we're pushing up against value area low, and I'm thinking about shorting it, but now we're holding above, or excuse me, I'm thinking about getting long, but now we're holding below value area low, the trade's off. I can't take it. Like, I need to wait until I understand that this is holding. Um, outside the scope of this call, to do like a proper training, on whether or not a, a, a price is holding above or below our levels. But that's one big thing you miss. The, the second thing I, I would miss is just contextually. If we've ever been directional, like this got very directional off those highs all the way through to coast to coast. Deep pullback in the afternoon, very normal. Holding below the open, holding below mid of day. This was mid of day. Go back and draw it from high to low when this pullback happened. Right there where we stopped, this was mid of day. Mid of day, VWAP, and the open, we held below all those levels. There was nothing here to assume that the bulls had taken over. This would be another nice thing to understand is what, when does something change? If we have a big move, when does something change? When are, are big drop, when are those bears no longer in control? If you were looking at this at any point, you thought that the, bull, the bears lost control of this, you're wrong. They didn't. Like, this would be another really helpful question to understand as you're going through this is, you know, answering those types of questions because that would help you. There's honestly probably a few more things we can talk about, but, you know, that's probably something to start with, a few thoughts for your thoughts uh, without getting too lost in the sauce here. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. Let's see here. Um, skip my question, Mass Trader. Okay. Do you or have you ever used the dynamic volume point of control? And what's your take on it? Mash Trader, I've never used it. I don't have anything to speak about it. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Aaron, what do you use to get an idea of whether buyers or sellers are in control? Aaron, for me, it's mostly just context. There'll be some specific things on the order flow as well, but very granularly, like what happens on the order flow, typically I'm not understanding what exactly is happening Like when I say somebody's in control. Because to me, control doesn't, isn't necessarily meaning stuck inside of a range or, or holding value. You know, I would look at that as like nobody's in control. We're just balancing out. So it's just contextual. Contextual today, we opened up inside of a massive gap. We blasted outside the overnight range. We failed back inside the overnight range. These are big deals. Not the full picture yet, but this is a big deal. 
Um, big deal because repeatable patterns that I see very, very frequently. This is why I'm evangelistic about trading one product. When you guys were in the live room with me today, we entered those longs. I got off near those highs right before the pullback happened. Like these things don't happen on accident. This is because there's so much nuanced behavior around setting the initial balance, what's likely to happen when somebody was stepping in. You never will get these things if you're keeping an eye on, if you're trying every single day to trade the ES, the NQ, the Russell Gold, crude oil as well. I'm not saying you can't do these things, but you will sacrifice having a, a real level of mastery over one product. And there's a lot of benefits to it. There's also some downside because you will miss a lot of things. You know, so I'm not saying necessarily one is better than the other, but for me, for sure, very important to focus on these one things. Context is really important for who's in control though for me. James, took a short, but I'm kicking my butt for missing the 15 minute bearish candle at 115. <laughs> I'm still missing where that one, oh, maybe we're on different time zones actually. I don't know if that's where I am, uh, I'm thrown off by you, but I'm still not seeing any real bearish action at 115. <laughs> Or if that's not even you, if that wasn't even you who asked the questions, if everybody keeps talking about the 115 deal, forgive me if it is, I'm a little lost in the <laughs> sauce here as I say again. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, uh, Ocean Blue, can you put a picture of your dog or cat live on the screen instead of your face? Um, Ocean Blue, I could put a dog or a cat picture up live. Um, that was something I would do, but then I turn 12 and I don't do kid shit like that, Ocean Blue. Deca, how much contracts did you use for the 5K? Or was it 5K per contract? 5K total, biggest size was six contracts. And this came from establishing size. You guys see, the first trade I usually take is one, maybe two contracts. There was a time today where I put on three contracts. If I'm not growing that PL, I'm not accessing more. But if I can understand that I'm, I'm pushing this, then I push the contracts. And it's not just about, oh, this is the house money, so let me be more aggressive with it. Like, that's not my, my mindset. My mindset is, Something is happening. I'm in sync with this. There's a reason why these trades are working. Today is likely to be at a day where I'm in sync, and I want to be pushing that as aggressive as I can. So later in the day, I put a trade with four contracts. I put a trade with six contracts, always because my P&L was increasing. Um, there was a trade that took me down the kind of that, I think before we ever dropped into that P&L, uh, I was up 600 something dollars. After we broke down that initial balance, I went up like about 3,000. There was a shoot because that was a massive drop. And then there was two other trades I was involved with uh, that just put on much bigger size, all going in that same direction though. Let's hear thoughts about price hanging around the point of control for a long period at 1 p.m. Kind of thought it might stay sideways. James, I would say this, this again comes back to like context. This is something, does it make any sense for price to open up in this big gap? Have the ability to push us all the way through outside the overnight range extend range out the way that we did, fail coast to coast, extend out that range. During the afternoon lull, pull back a little bit. This is fine. Does it make any sense that we're going to leave that gap under or that we're just going to go sideways from here on out? I would strongly argue no. How you know, do we understand whether or not something is likely? We have to understand these products. Maybe it is likely, maybe it's not, but these are things that we need to be able to answer. And there's no cookie cut answer that just says, hey, when this happens and this happens, that we're going sideways. There are signs for it, but the signs are gonna be different every single day. When we can zoom this out a little bit and understand contextually what's going on, massive gap and goes all day. Big players are showing up. We're dipped into this gap zone. We're holding below the open. Somebody's still in charge here. What is the likelihood that we just chill for the rest of the day right in this range? Not very good, especially because we're looking at potentially somebody being in charge Looking at range, this is other things I would look at. What's the potential like range for the day? We were still very short on that, so extending out the range would still be very likely. Sometimes we get crazy and we, you know, the, the range for the day is 70 points already. We have a deep pullback. Ugh. How likely are we to extend out the range and go 90 points or something? 80 points. Not really good. We're already over the amount of range we should have on a day. You know, these type of things play into, play into the idea here. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I was late. No worries. Uh... <laughs> Oh, I forgot I put it on the thumbnail. I was like, everybody's very interested in PL today for some reason. I forgot I put it on the PL. Just over $5,000, Nathaniel. Great answer, much appreciated. Need to refine my understanding of holding levels. Yeah, Elliot, it would be a, a really big deal. DA is cracking up about something. I love it. I love it. Spencer, size matters, guys. Uh, in some cases, in some cases, for sure. 
So I hear. Um, Jay Smith, laughing. I might be missing a joke. Maybe it's me. Sometimes I crack myself up and I don't even remember. Let's see here. Made 0.5% today. Feels very good. That's a great day. Bach. Elid, usually you go all in and scale out. Why did you change the policy? Elid, I didn't change the policy. Uh, I just have very tight risk parameters. So if I want to start off with like three contracts, one or two, honestly, like one good trade goes against me. I'm really struggling for risk parameters now. You know what I mean? So my risk parameters are very tight. So what I'm doing if I'm going all in is I'm still pushing the button once. I'm starting with one contract. I'm still going all in, all out. My all in is just maybe smaller. And then if I'm seeing something that gives me more confidence, like this trade is holding, I'll put the second, maybe even the third contract on. You know what I mean? And it's just a matter of, this is where I want to get in. I'm going to get in. If I get in, this immediately starts working against me. I'm just taking the smaller size. If I get in and I'm seeing some more information, I'm getting more confirmation that this is working. I'll, you know, I'll do it. I'll do it. But it's still all in because I'm not letting the trades work against me and then increasing size as it goes against me. You know, it's still the same exact policy. It's just a little bit tweaked because my risk parameters are extremely tight right now. Uh, let's see here. Hashtag Baki. Fun to watch. Congrats. Okay, okay, okay. Good job all around. Congratulations to everybody. Single contract, single contract gets into profit. Thought I was correct, so I hit it big. But market says gotcha and didn't break that low. Reversed. Happened a lot lately. Just sharing. Imran, I hear you, brother. Single contract gets into profit. Thought I was correct. So I hit it big. But markets say it. I gotcha. Yeah, I'm interested, Imran, if you mean like you're one contract in and then you start increasing the size because you think you hit it big and then it flips back around on you. That would be, you know, potentially a management issue. Or if there's the one contract that you just think is working really big and then the whole thing flips around. Either way, I would say this, especially if you're talking about just one contract. Um, very difficult. If you guys, you know, see me trade, I'm typically in scaling out of positions, potentially putting positions back on. The reason being is markets are tough. It gets very tough if you have one contract and your whole strategy is go all in and all out. What's so tough about that is you have to be ridiculously accurate with your entries and your exits. One of the best things I can always say, and if you see me trading live during this challenge, like you see me doing this all the time, like even today when we were holding, we were long originally, our first trade, we were looking for this to go to 42.60 as like a minimum. It pushed in to 42.58. I took the trade off. Why? I wasn't just freaking out and bailing out early. I was up seven or eight points on the trade. I was trying to get the extra two points or six ticks and the, the market was giving me issues. So I, I went in locked in profit. You know, it wasn't going to be like a dick for the tick. But if your whole thing is just all in, all out, and you're just relying on exact entries, like this is very tough because the market requires us to be a little bit more, we got to finesse things a little bit more than that. Let's see here. Uh, Zohab, forgive me for saying that name probably very wrong. Trading psychology tips, question mark. I mean, listen, you can always ask me a specific question, which would be a lot better. The biggest tip I can give you about psychology in this, this business is work on your biases. You have these biases that if you don't even know they're happening, you are lost in this business. If you don't understand, if you think, if you think for one minute that you're in control of what's going on and that you're rational and that you make good decisions, if I was to ask you, are you rational? Do you make good decisions? Are you in control of the decisions you make? If you answer yes to any of that, you're, are, you are lost to the world. If you ask me that question, I'll tell you I'm not. <laughs> like, I know I'm not. We're not. Nobody's above this stuff. We got this parts of our brain that just make us do the stupidest stuff in the world when we're in the heat of moments. Um, so we can get levels of control over that, but it never goes away. We still got these crazy impulses. Ha almost everything that you do on the screens, you, you're doing what is ingrained in you to do, what feels right, what feels natural. Every one of those decisions is wrong. I promise you, every single one. If you follow your impulses and get out when you want to get out, you will be wrong every single time. It's the craziest thing in the world. So you got to work on your biases. Really understand just simple things even, like Google biases and just read about it. You know what I mean? Like the, uh, the, the uh, just so many, everything. Like we're biased about everything. A very, what's like the most common bias in the world? Somebody help me out here. I don't know why I can't think of it right now. I know why I can't. My brain is fried from trading all day. Um, the bias where we want to be right about stuff. 
Somebody help me out in the chat. But anyway, you start to identify those. You start to understand how those are making you do very dumb things. And then you can really push yourself forward in this business. Outside of that, you can spend, and this is what happens. This, let, me tell you what, let me tell you what happens. Traders start trading. They learn some kind of a method. They Confirmation bias. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Uh, confirmation bias. This confirmation bias thing will just absolutely beat the crap out of you in the markets. Do you understand how this works and how your mind just does stupid things here? But let me tell you this. This is what happens. Traders come into this business. They learn a method. They learn about Forex. They learn about something. They're doing it. They suck. It blows up. They lose their money. They bounce around to something else. They bounce around to something else. They bounce around to something else. They'll try futures. They'll try volume profile. They'll try moon cycles. You know, they'll try everything. And they never in this journey take a step and say, what am I doing? They never turn the lens inside to try and work on themselves because working on yourself is freaking hard. It is, uh, most people would rather go outside in the hot sun and work all day than to spend several hours just working on themselves. It's brutally difficult work that nobody likes to do. I don't like to do it, but we got to do it. We got to do it. And so if you never turn that lens on yourself and figure out like, what am I doing to make all these things keep failing? You're just going to keep repeating the plot. You're just going to jump around forever for the rest of your life. When you finally find something that makes sense, for me, it was the futures market. It was active trading. It was the volume profile. These things I know work. I knew that there were successful people that did this. I knew that I could make a living doing this. Now it was time to turn it in and just you know, buckle down. I've never jumped around to another system after this. Okay, we have uh, a few more minutes. I'm going to smash the mess out of these comments, and then we're going to wrap up for the day and be done. Um, this is our last one, so I'm glad we were able to hang out for a little bit. We will be back on Monday. Not our last one ever, but this is our last one for right now. Uh, let's all hit the like button as I'm wrapping up, and then we'll, we'll, we'll be done. Aaron, can you show how you would select the profile for the balance area from April slash May uh, that we entered into? Thank you and congrats on the great day. Thank you as well. Aaron, a little outside the, uh, the scope to start right now on the call. We're just running pretty late, but sometime in the future, let's draw out some micro composites. That would be awesome. Uh, Going to skip over that for today. Apologies. Let's bring it up on another day though. So the first few losses were more, uh, the more were with one contract. So the first few losses the morning were with one contract. Uh, Elid, I don't remember how the first trade of the day was a win. I don't exactly remember exactly how it panned out right now, but I'll always start small either way. Uh, not to say I always only put on that one contract, but I'll always start with that one contract. If it's, you know, the right thing, I'll increase the size. Uh, thanks, Mad. Thanks, Mad. Are you trading the MES or the ES? The ES. Uh, do you use order flow? Yes, yes, yes. The hardest thing is not to move your stop loss and accept a loss. It's really helped me to improve just to accept the losses. Hammer on the head. Scream it from the mountaintops. Being able to lose. I think I heard FT say this once. If he could train people to do one thing in trading, it would be to train them how to take a loss because it's one of the most difficult things that people struggle with. And I believe that. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 cognitive bias is still my favorite. <laughs> right on, Spencer. Right on. Watching, watching, at watching you talk. LOL. Okay, but sometimes you stop. But sometimes your stop is too close and you get stopped out by a couple of ticks uh, to get stopped out of a good position. Um, James, I'm not sure if that's a comment on me or not personally. I do get stopped out of positions like that. And everything's got some yin and yang to it. For me, there's always positions where the market is not exact. And I don't want to be in these positions where I'm in trades. It goes to like a certain amount against me. And then I figure out that I'm wrong as it pushes even further. Well, I would rather err on the side of taking smaller losses, taking a loss, and then putting that trade back on. Um, because I understand one of the superpowers that we have as active traders is we can get fully out of positions, fully in positions whenever we want. We're trading products like the S&P, not in every market, but for us, it's going to be no issue ever. This is a superpower. Big institutions, big players, they have a lot of things on us in terms of size and capital and resources. It takes them a long time to unwind positions. We got to be able to use these things to our advantage. Let's see here. Uh, thanks for sharing your answer. Appreciate you. You're very welcome. Very welcome. Baki, you don't trade Friday. Friday is the one day that I just trade by myself. So I trade live either in our group or on stream every single day of my life. Friday is a day for me. I usually have a very exhaustive kind of wild night on fr Thursdays, just the way my schedule works. I'm out very late on Thursdays. Fridays, your boy's not fresh. And I like to just be me and uh, my, my Fridays are for me. But I will be trading. 
You're very, very welcome. Have a great weekend. Jay, you have a great weekend as well. One of the best shows on trading. You are gold. Elliot, mm, appreciate the kind words to everybody else in the room. Um, nice turnout today. Glad everybody is here. LOL, Baki, we'll end it with you right there. Okay, got through all the chats. Uh, pretty long stream today, about 45 minutes. This is a, yeah, this is a proper chit chat, wasn't it? I'm glad you guys are all here with me. I'll say it again. I'll say it yesterday. I'll say it today. I'll say it Monday, probably. I love ending out my days with you guys. And I appreciate you guys being here. I know there's a lot of places that you could be. Let's all hit the like button on the way out. We're not going to be back tomorrow for anything. So good luck to you all if you're going to be on the screens. We will be back Monday bright and early for live trading. If you want to join me at 930, I'd love to see you out, hanging out. We'll trade live. And then we'll be back at 4 p.m. on Monday for the next Daily Profile Show if you guys want to join me there. As I'm saying it, I said it wrong. Monday, we're going to be there at 2 p.m. for trading Eastern Time. Every other day is going to be 930 a.m. Uh, you know, I had one job to say an ending remark and I blew it. All right. Take care, everybody. I miss you already. Have a great weekend and good luck out there.